metabolic confusion. Okay, so I just want to make this video just to kind of go over wh what it is, what it is not, and really, so I went through the scientific, uh, you know, the studies, the literature on it, and I really just picked out three things that really just stood out to me as some, some benefits to actually eating this way. Um, reason why I want to make this video is because I've just been seeing it come up in in my news feed when I read the news in the morning, just been seeing these articles just like this one. I hadn't really been too familiar with this with this term or this name for this diet, metabolic confusion. So it really kind of piqued my interest and I just really wanted to dive into it. So I'm just gonna share with you what I've learned. So before I get into all that, I just wanna say, I know people are really get kind of defensive when you start talking about diets, which is why I've kind of been putting off making this video. And what I just want to say is not all diets are good. Not all diets are bad. I'm just here to share some information with you. I'm not trying to tell you what to eat or how to eat. I'm just sharing the information because if it's popping up in my newsfeed, it's popping up in other people's. So this is for the people who are just curious, want some more information. If you're already doing it, good for you. Um, if you tried it, didn't like it, you know, share, share your experience. Uh, I just want to say it's not, I'm not trying to promote a diet, I'm just giving you information. So you do with it whatever you want to. Okay, so let's get into it. What is metabolic confusion? I just want to start off right off the bat. There has never been any scientific information, no scientific conclusions that prove that you can confuse your metabolism. This is a very, very poor name for this diet okay that is not don't get that stuck in your head that you're going to confuse your metabolism because it's never been proven there's no evidence that you can do it so scientifically what this is called is calorie cycling or calorie shifting or intermittent calorie restriction those are all three of those are better names for this diet Metabolic confusion is not it because that does not that doesn't describe what's happening whatsoever. That's just that's just bad. Don't <clears throat> Okay, so what is it? Let me give you a little example. And uh, this is just an example, these numbers are just they're just numbers because they're easy to work with. So example is say you have a ten day period, right? You restrict how much you're eating for 10 days. Say you normally eat 2,000 calories. For 10 days, you might eat 1,500 or 1,600, okay? Then the next three days, you're back on your 2,000. So 10 days, restricted calories. Three days, your regular diet, you're just eating whatever you, whatever you normally did before, okay? Now, Different studies show different things. Doesn't have to be, you know, a 10 day, three day split or a 10 day, four day or a, you know, a five day, two day, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. Because what the point is, is to lower your average calorie intake for that period. So what you're doing is you're, you're eating less calories over time. That's really essentially what it is. And this really does actually come with some benefits. I was kind of surprised to find out um, that the benefits have actually been you know, shown in scientific studies. So um, the, f the first one I want to bring up is adherence. So the probably the most popular study that I've seen out there is they took these group of 74 women, all of them overweight. They, they split them in two. So it's two groups. And uh, what they did was they took one group and they just put them, <clears throat> they just put them on a regular, just a regular calorie restricted diet. Okay. And the other group, they did this intermittent calorie restriction, right? So they had a few free days. And uh, so they finished the study, they let them all go. They brought them back later to ask them, you know, to kind of do a survey on them, see how they're doing. And the amount of people that were still eating that way that were adhering to you know losing weight was higher in the group who was doing the intermittent calorie restriction so the reason I bring this one up first is because if you can't stick to it if you can't make a long-term habit out of it if you can't make it a behavior 
then you miss out on the health benefits, right? The health benefits are in losing weight if that's your goal. If you're severely overweight, you know, if you're, they call it morbidly obese, right? Because it's dangerous for your health. So if you can't stick to it and actually accomplish that health goal, then what's the point, you know? The whole point is to find what works for you and do that to meet your health goal. So that's why I bring that one up first, adherence, because it, it's really important. It do, you know, it doesn't really matter. Well, I don't want to say it doesn't matter how it works, but it definitely won't work if you can't stick to it. So adherence, number one in this study, that's what they found out. Okay, so number two, retention of fat-free mass. Okay, so if you just losing weight isn't really like, yes, losing weight is good. But while you're losing weight, you want to maintain as much fat-free mass as you can. So you want to lose fat and you want to keep all the good stuff, right? You want to keep your muscles healthy. You want to keep good quality muscle on your body while losing fat, right? You want to change your body composition, not just be stuck on focusing on, I'm just going to lose a bunch of weight, right? Because you, you really can just lose weight and still be unhealthy, okay? Especially as we get older, if you've ever worked with old people, um, if you've ever, you know, if you're really close with elderly people in your own family, you might even have noticed that older people with less muscle mass tend to be in poorer health, right? And it's just, it's hard for older people to keep muscle on them to begin with. And if you're overweight, trying to lose weight and you're older, right? You're overweight. You, you don't want to be dropping a whole bunch of your fat-free mass. You don't want to be losing a bunch of your muscle if you're already older. I mean, losing the weight is going to benefit you, but keep the muscle. That's what you want to do. You want to keep the muscle. And what this other, what the second study has shown is that this intermittent calorie restriction is beneficial for those trying to lose weight but maintain muscle mass, right? So same thing, they took two groups. One of them, regular calorie restriction. The other, intermittent calorie restriction, right? They had some free days. What happened was these people, and these were athletes this time, they weren't overweight, but same theory applies, right? So they took them, the end, they measured their fat-free mass. The people were intermittent calorie restricted, higher. They kept more of it, right? They lost um, a pretty similar amounts of overall body weight, but their body composition was better than those who were just calorie restricted. So huge plus there, huge plus. So the third and final thing that I want to bring up from these studies is resting metabolic rate. Um, so back to the first study, the resting metabolic rate they was also tested in these two groups of um, women, right? And what they found was the women who were just on the just the pure calorie restriction, their resting metabolic rate, once they restricted those calories, it went down. It went down quite a bit. And it took a while to kind of come back. So your resting metabolic rate, when you cut calories, is it goes down, right? Your body, now the thought is your body's trying to conserve energy. If you want to know more about this, I made a video about this, adaptive thermogenesis. It'll help kind of clear this up a little bit more. That way I don't have to go into it too far right now. But anyway, when you cut calories, your body has a tendency to, uh, to lower your resting metabolic rate. So you're using less calories, trying to conserve energy. If you're trying to lose weight, this makes it more difficult because you're using less calories. So what they found was this other group of women who was doing the intermittent calorie restriction, their resting metabolic rate came down, but not as much. And it recovered more quickly. So they had a, they both had a dip in their resting metabolic rate, but the intermittent calorie restriction, not as far down, and it came up with time, right? With, well, with less time. They both come up with time, but intermittent calorie restriction came up with less time. So um, at rest, you're using more calories. So if weight loss is your goal, this is what you want. So that's the three things. Adherence, retention of fat-free mass, 
and an improved resting metabolic rate while cutting calories. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to say about this one. Just kind of clear that up. That metabolic confusion, terrible name. Very, very poor choice of name. Um, but there are some benefits in intermittent calorie restriction. Okay, so if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below uh, in the description. I'll put all the studies that, that I was looking at. I'll put links to the to the articles that I, that I was reading. So there'll probably be you know five or six links down there. Anyway, if you like the video, if you got anything out of it, please hit the thumbs up button. 